Vaughn, 8 out of 10 cat. From Max and Patty, it's Patrick McGinnis. Funny man, Ed Burns. And their captain, Dave Spikey. And facing them tonight, just stepped out of the salon, it's Jay Goody. Comedian, Reginald D. Hunter. And their captain, Sean Locke. Now, welcome your host, my friend and yours, Jimmy Carr. Welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, if you were to count up every hot dog sold outside football grounds in Britain on a Saturday, chances are your nickname's Rain Man. <laughs> 40,000 Americans are injured in the toilet every year. Most accidents are from people slipping on a wet floor. Just goes to show you've got to look out for number one. <laughs> Half of all the people who have ever smoked have now stopped. Sounds good, but when I say stopped, a lot of them have died. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave, your team to go first. What have the nation been talking about this week? Um, well, around Owe, it's been this smoking ban. I think the government like reneged on the deal again, where they said that uh, it was going to be a partial ban. I know they've changed their mind and it's a full ban. They were going to have like, um, designated areas in pubs, weren't they, for smoking? And to my mind, that's like having a swimming bath with designated urinating areas. <laughs> but it's, part, it's part of the week that, uh, that Tony Blair was worried about when, in his dual... Premiership. He's worried about this week because him and Brown were trying to push these measures through, and so far they've got them all through. I think. I've been in this country since what '97. Yeah, and I've been that, yeah. hearing about um, Gordon Brown going eventually be prime minister, and it's supposed to be this shift of power. And he was in the paper about it again this week. And I noticed Gordon seemed to have a lot more to say about this than Tony do. It's almost like he's a girlfriend who thinks he's a girlfriend, but he ain't really no girlfriend. <laughs> I see him there, you're like, when am I be prime minister? And Tony's like, soon, baby. <laughs> paperwork, baby. You know, the paperwork takes time. The people I always felt sorry for in Ireland since they brought in the smoking ban is, is the passive smokers, you know? Because these people are, you know, who've been passively smoking all their drinking lives. <laughs> they're, they're sitting in pubs now going, isn't it great? There's no smoking, it's fantastic. My clothes don't stink, there's an ashtray full of muck, it's brilliant. But why do I feel so terribly on edge all of a sudden? <laughs> so it's a ban drinking in pubs. As well, <laughs> that's really lousy for your health. And the idea that it's it's antisocial. I have never seen a group of smokers rampaging down the high street, kicking in windows, <laughs> pushing old ladies over, going, whee, whee. <laughs> yeah. If they do well, go on a rampage down the streets, it doesn't. It's not very far because they tend to run out of breath yeah, about halfway yeah. down that street. <laughs> they're going to work? Is there going to be police forces in every single pub and restaurant? So when you light a cigarette, they say, 50 quid, please, put that out or you're arrested. What you do is, the reason people stop is not fear of the fine, it's just everyone going... <laughs> <laughs> I think we lead the world yeah. in tutting, don't we? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> when we first brought it in Ireland, I wasn't even thinking, and I went to light up a cigarette first time I was back, and the guy's like, ah, you can't smoke it in here, I'll have to take it outside, it's the law. I'm like, fair enough. And I'm on my way out. He goes, ah, but you can't take your drink outside. I'm like, oh, you're just trying to annoy me now, aren't you? <laughs> I just stand outside, just leave me beer just inside the door and just stand outside and just look at me beer as I'm smoking the bag. <laughs> you can feel the beer looking back at you. You, the beer, the bag, you all know in our hearts you belong together. <laughs> they have banned it in some American cities, haven't they? Do you approve? Well, as I live here, I couldn't give a fuck about what's going on. <laughs> There are times you're reading fancy cigarette and it's going to be quite, it's going to be quite tricky. Like, you know, if you just cheated death in an air disaster. Do you really want to have a cigarette then? <laughs> I reckon you, they'll let you. Yeah, do you reckon? If you've just cheated death in an air, air disaster, disaster, yeah. But well, you won't care anyway, will you? Yeah. Just go, piss off. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I think you put I, that I, plane out. <laughs> Are you, are you saying, saying like, if, you're, if your seat somehow gets thrown out of the plane into yeah. a pub? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see whether the smoking ban is one of the top five most talked about things this week. Get in. Yes, it Get is. <laughs> Interestingly, the ban on smoking will not apply to Wales, which is one more reason to visit Wales, which brings the total to one. <laughs> 
Sean, Jade, Reginald, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Well, I think definitely uh, the Winter Olympics. The thing I find really fascinating is the judges in the ice skating. They're just so harsh. As you can see, in ice skates, do amazing things like leap in the air, do three twists, come down on one leg, skate off, spin round, and, and we're all going, that's amazing. And the judge goes, moved his head. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see what score I'd get on the ice. <laughs> Have you ever skated before? A little bit, but I'd be clinging to the side. Going, <laughs> 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 what, what score I'd get? Well, I'd get like 0.1. But well, we, we, we win very little, so we, we could introduce events that we'd have a chance of winning over here that we're good at in this country. Sliding down a hill on a bin bag. <laughs> <laughs> There's 50 be at the top of the hill like that, Swiss going, what do you think, Hangs? We'd be halfway down. Come on, Billy! <laughs> trees, in and out of trees. We could have old men clearing a path relay. Pissing <laughs> in snow. Yeah, right in your name. I love the curling, do you not? I can't go to bed if curling's on. Six pack bag of nuts, I'm up all night with curlings on, I'm like, that mm. me. <laughs> you know, use your brush, use your brush! <laughs> I'd be nice if in the middle of the target they had a hole and he heard a big sploosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know this year one of the English teams said it, the, the ice is not up to the standard it should be for Olympics and so it's not as exciting as it should be. <laughs> How are you going to have to win Olympics and not have a snowball fight? They should have a snowball fight, everybody wearing a flag representing their country, and whoever just get bust dead, sent in the head. Boosh! If we drew Germany in the semi finals, whoa! Uh, It'd be some, bloodshed. Get some calling, Billy, get some calling. Hey, come on. I was just say, are you sure you know what you're talking about? Because I didn't think the Olympics even start, because I thought you was having it here. <laughs> No, you're absolutely right. The Olympics isn't on. I'm mental. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I was going about. What are you talking about? The Winter Olympics? Will you shut up? We're just mad. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beginning. It's going to be in here somewhere. When is it here? Yeah. When's it here, Jade? I don't know. That's why I'm a bit confused if he's on that. No, you might be right. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you better, be better tell Hazel Irvin and the whole British <laughs> team out there <laughs> reporting these crazy foreigners slipping about on the ice. I thought you were doing that. Then? Celebrity ice skating thing. Have you been watching celebrity ice skating and you got confused? No. Oh, uh, you know, that's, that's the first thing I flick on when I come home in the evening. <laughs> I don't want to drink, I don't want to smoke, I don't want to touch nobody's ass, I want to watch celebrity <laughs> ice skating. That's, that's me, yeah. There's, there's not enough dogs on ice. <laughs> Take oh. a dog <laughs> into the middle of an ice rink, put it down, <laughs> go off to the edge, shout it. <laughs> 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 well, let's have a look and see whether the Winter Olympics is one of the most talked about things this week. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Winter Olympics kicked off last week. Britain's Tom Clemens took part in the 10k skiing sprint. He had to be content with 79th position. He was beaten by spring. <laughs> the scientists had to invent a new metal for his medal, last year. <laughs> Dave, what else have the nation been talking about this week? What about that bloke, the British guy, uh, uh, the climber on holiday in Spain, who ended up having to survive by drinking his own piss? Which takes something out of the story when you're using it as a chat up, I think. You know, <laughs> yes, I survived for five days. <laughs> Just me, man against the elements. What did you do? Well, I had to make a little covey in a, in a, in a, in a crevasse of grass. I drank my own piss. And like, you did what? <laughs> <laughs> I hid in a crevasse. No, no, after that. <laughs> <laughs> Drink my own piss. Yeah, all right, see you later. <laughs> it, was, it was a brilliant story, but it wasn't one of the most talked about things this week. This was the story of a British man who kept himself alive on a Spanish mountain by drinking his own urine. He managed to inch himself along the ground for some 300 metres with a broken hip and beat the British bobsleigh record by 1.39 seconds. <laughs> John Steen, what else have people been talking about this week? Valentine's Day, people have been talking about that. I think Asda had a card. Uh, they, 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 their big publisher they had a card which was... Retail for 8p. If someone got me that, I'd, I'd, I'd be mortified. Well, the thing is, though, Jade, if you hung around till closing time, you'd get it for 6p. <laughs> I could have sneaked it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't celebrate Valentine's Day, all of that crazy stuff. Just, it bugs me. It, 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 it's, it's International Test Day, so a woman get to test how much a man love her. For instance, I can't tell my lady if she got a fat ass. Now, because you ain't supposed to tell a lady she, ain't got, she got a fat ass. Even if she asks you she got a fat ass, you can't say she got a fat ass, because she's, even though she suspects she got a fat ass. And, <laughs> and, but I got to lie and subvert reality and pretend that she don't have a fat ass, when reality, the reason I'm with her is because she got a fat ass. <laughs> Jade, 
But you have just told her she's got a fat ass now. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> baby, happy yeah. Valentine's Day. Yeah. I'm quite a traditionalist with that. I like all the chocolates and flowers and all that. I've just come back off my holidays today, and uh, the girl out there, we went out, lovely meal, flowers, took her back to the room, chocolates, made love all night. And I'll never forget the morning after, as I were counting the money out. <laughs> I don't know if you read this also this week. In China, the most popular gift on Valentine's Day was uh, plastic surgery. <laughs> it really was. It was like, I love you more than life itself. Here, go and get your face changed. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. Let's have a look and see if Valentine's was one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> Valentine's Day is the one day of the year when you receive anonymous mail where the sender reveals they want to have sex with you and you think, oh, that's nice. <laughs> We've got two more to get buzzing if you think you know what the nation have been talking about. Is it the US Vice President going out hunting and shooting his mate? Which <laughs> 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 is really funny. I mean, he thought he said, I'm mistooking for a quail. Then he went, Did you see the size of that fucking quail? <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame he didn't go with Bush, though, isn't it? Just that would have been nice if he'd mm. shot Bush. That would have been perfect. <laughs> if George Bush had popped out of a bush and he'd blown his stupid face off. <laughs> Now, Reg, you're, you're an American man. Have you been hunting? Uh, no, I've never been hunting. I've been in the forest with a gun, but... <laughs> <laughs> Don't threaten me, Reg. <laughs> I, was, I, I was doing something else, though. Yeah. <laughs> I do think you showed quails, because when I went on hunting, I only said that you showed ferrets, rabbits... You went hunting? You sure you weren't working for rent to kill No! <laughs> <laughs> you weren't hitting rats with a shovel. <laughs> I'm going to go to shoot the ferrets. You're going to go and shoot ferrets? In the season. In the season? Is there a season for shooting ferrets? <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> yeah. Do you mean pheasants? Pheasants! <laughs> <laughs> right, should we have a look and see if Dick Cheney shooting someone in the face is one of the top stories this week? Yes, it is. Hey. Yes, 52% of you were talking about American Vice President Dick Cheney shooting a lawyer in the face, in the woods, outside Dallas. Right, we've got one more thing to get. Fingers on buzzers. Is it the chip and pin card? If you're buying anything, you've got to know your pin number. You can't, you can't sign for it anymore. Is it that? Well, that's been a very big story this week. I think it's good, because I've had money disappearing out of my bank account, going um, to, what do you call it, shopping on the internet. I don't even know how to use that, so that's not me. And also gambling. And I don't gamble, and apparently I've won a free bets and all, but I don't know how, because I've never even been on it. So this chip and pin that I've used quite good. I feel like I'm on a bus. <laughs> 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 I'm listening in. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if chip and pin was one of the most talked about things this week. Oh. Yes, it was. 54% of you were talking about the introduction of Chip and Pin this week. Right, well, at the end of that round, I can tell you that uh, Sean, Jade and Reginald have two points. Uh, Dave, Ed and Paddy have three points. <laughs> the next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world, and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to the panellists to fill in the gaps. 60% of air passengers have had problems with what? The pilot. I just judged this on one incident where I was flying recently to Alicante and we got up to 35,000 feet. He came on and went, uh, pilot, Captain Johnson speaking, reached our cruising altitude, 35,000 feet, on the way to Alicante, weather on route's fire. SHIT! <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Uh -uh, and we sat there like... <laughs> he came back on and he went, I'm really sorry, I might have scared some passengers. And what happened was, in the middle of my announcement, the stewardess brought me a coffee and spilt it on me. And that was all he was, I'm sorry. And he said, you want to see the front of my pants? <laughs> and some bloke at the back went, you want to see the back of mine? 60% uh, of our passengers have had problems with a life jacket under your seat and not a parachute. <laughs> Is it collecting their luggage? Because I get my bags lost on average once out of every time. <laughs> I feel like when I check in and they, and they say, we'd like to ask a few questions about your bags, I feel like saying, well, I'd like to ask you a few questions about my bags. <laughs> like, how are they getting on the plane? <laughs> are you packing this plane yourself? <laughs> Will you leave my bags unattended for any length of time? <laughs> it's also uh, have problems with the safety, but the whole safety briefing thing and the fact that you, uh, you can survive a crash in an aeroplane just by leaning forward a bit. <laughs> uh, 
Go on, right now. Go right now. Like that. Are attracting attention in the middle of Atlantic with a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God they're here. <laughs> 60% of bird passengers have had problems with that kid in front of them. Now, here's my tip. There's, if there's a kid in front of you, wanna, sooner or later, want to peep. Want to stand on the seat and peep at you like that. Here's my tip. If you're flying anywhere, don't peep back. Because it will just go on for the whole flight. <laughs> now, I know it's to do by, like that. Uh, 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 just get hold of it eventually. Go, it's always going to be me. Or that, it's always going to be me here. <laughs> I would think the seats would be a problem. Like, like especially like in America. Like, it, like, say, for instance, you got a fat ass. <laughs> in America, a lot of people got a fat ass, and I would think that the seats would consistently be a problem over there, but I've seen a few people over here, and they seem like, well, I've seen a lot of fat people, but they ain't got no fat ass. <laughs> I don't know how they do that. <laughs> Rich, uh, uh, that's exactly the right answer. It is 60% of air passengers have had problems with their seat. The main problem being it's next to a man whose shoe is ticking. <laughs> Two thirds of judges are in favour of what? I think, I think they'd be in favour of. I think, I think it's really good. If all the jewellery all wore fancy dress. <laughs> yeah, like, one, like village people, one's a pirate, <laughs> one's a cowboy, one's a spaceman, and they what go. What made you think a pirate? <laughs> <laughs> A friend, of mine, a friend of mine was a lawyer, and uh, he said he was, in, he was in a courtroom where the judge sentenced this guy, and he was, there's, a, there's a certain sort of cachet in, in, in how you receive your sentence. And this bloke, he sentenced this guy to two and a half years, and he went, two and a half years, I'll do that spinning on my cock. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. he gave him another six months. <laughs> wigs. Correct. That is the right answer. Two-thirds of judges are in favour of wigs. So at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, Jade and Reginald have five points and Dave, Patrick and Ed have three points. Oh. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and surveys. It's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Thing that most annoys men. I'll tell you what annoys me, and it's a thing I've noticed more and more, especially in theme pubs, is when you go to the, the, the toilets in the theme pub and it doesn't say ladies and gents anymore, they put something like, they have pictures of two deer, and it would be like bucks and hinds, and you go, I think I'm with bucks. Oh. <laughs> oh, the worst one is, is, for, is for swans, and it's a cob and a pen. And he's have two swans, and you go, cob and pen, which one? Which one? Oh, I hate that. And they notice they don't do it with the disabled toilets. They don't have, like, a, 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 a deer <laughs> with an antler down like that. <laughs> I don't know what my manhood really got nothing to do with it, but this annoyed me. I was watching um, news one morning, and it's supposed to be like the news, the man reading the news, this is his news. And then he took newspapers from other, you know, from other sources, and he read the headlines as if this was his news. <laughs> and he do this every day. <laughs> and don't nobody say nothing. Now, when I did this in school, they said this was cheating. <laughs> That's like me having my own cooking show on TV and saying, Welcome to Big Daddy's Kitchen. I don't really feel like cooking nothing today, but look at all this wonderful stuff that Ainsley Harriet brought back. <laughs> Is it their girlfriends talking to them through the cat? What's you doing? Oh, he's watching his program. <laughs> he's watching that silly program, isn't he? We don't like that program, because it's science fiction, which is silly to a nerd's watch. You know when you think you've got a day off, because your partner or your wife, she says, I'm going to the shops, I've me heard done, I'm going out with the girls for dinner, and then you're thinking, yes, yes, get up. Big breakfast, go down, get the racing post, pick a few horses, bookies, have a few pints at dinner, brilliant. Get downstairs, fucking list. <laughs> <laughs> Things to do. I've left you a list. You've left me what? <laughs> well done, girls. This is just remarkable. Number one, feed dogs. That's all right. Two minutes, no problem. Number two, wash last night's pots. All right, minute. Number three, water plants. Have they got plants? <laughs> <laughs> Number four, Point Gable End. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> I've no idea what pointing a gable end is. <laughs> you know those rough men that come occasionally come round your house? They do that. Giving directions when in the car, reading the map. Are you good at reading the map, Jay? I don't know where to go when the line finishes. <laughs> I just job. wish, at like, like this point, I just like to say, I wish this was a foreign film and that was in subtitles. <laughs> It's an art house cinema. Going, oh, right. 
<laughs> it's an interesting film. I'm going to give you, give you a clue to this. It's related to something you do in your lounge. It's the loss of the remote control, moving, can't find it, where that is it? That is the right answer. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> the thing that most annoys men is someone hiding the TV remote. My girlfriend hides the remote on top of the TV, which rather <laughs> defeats the purpose of having a remote. <laughs> Most dangerous driving habit. Is it when you, uh, you sell a tape of cushion to your face? Like that? <laughs> <laughs> you can't see a bloody thing. Is that a can of peas running under your brake pedal? <laughs> and you can't use it, can you? It's hardly a driving habit, though, is it? <laughs> There's cans of peas. <laughs> <laughs> is it feeling each other up with you with somebody else in the car while you're driving? Like, you're driving, and then, you know, she rub on you, and then you start rubbing on her. Then she says you failed your test. <laughs> <laughs> it's to do with distance. Parking. Oh, at people's bums. Correct. <laughs> so the answer is the most dangerous driving habit is tailgating. Biggest problem facing dogs. My brother really loves his dog, I think, a bit too much. And you know... You know <laughs> no, no, not in that way. <laughs> If you know dogs are supposed to have seven years to our one, he gives his dog seven birthdays a year. He gets seven birthdays for it. <laughs> but he gives it the bumps as well. The dog doesn't like that particularly. <laughs> the last birthday is about 72. I think the biggest problem for the dog is being told that he's a member of the family, yet he still have to shit outside. <laughs> I think that's very confusing for a dog. And, just, and it make the dog not believe anything you tell him, like, well, I'm part of the family, but I don't see nobody else shitting outside. <laughs> Is he getting those buckets off? Oh, I love those. Yeah. I think they're made to make it easier to catch dog biscuits there, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> It is a health-related problem for dogs. Worms. Oh, obesity. So obesity is the right answer, Paddy. Yes. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are... Sean, Jade and Reginald have seven points. Hey. Dave, Patrick and Ed have six points. I mean, Sean's team are the winners tonight. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Join us next time when our guests will be Kelly Osborne, Neil Morrissey, Richard Madeley, and Vic Reeves. See you then. a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, the average person is capable of making more than a thousand facial expressions? And this is the one I made when I heard that statistic. <laughs> KFC is the most popular fast food restaurant in China. You would have thought it would have been a Chinese. 55% <laughs> of men wash their hands after going to the loo. What I do, and here's a tip for you, is I wash my winky in the morning and then I'm good for the rest of the day. <laughs> Started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean? Well, I think definitely you've been talking about bird flu, the approach of bird flu that's coming to us. People are very worried about it, aren't they? My mum panics because she reads all this stuff and she phoned up last week and she thought her, her budgie had got it, Sooty. She's got a budgie. 
And, uh, and apparently he was just in the corner of the cage shivering and won't go up its ladder. And he loves going up his ladder, so he loves it. <laughs> what happened was, turned out the grandkids had been getting him out of the cage and holding him over a globe of the world and spinning it down, and it just freaked him out. I'm too high! I'm too high! <laughs> bird flu, bird flu, horse run. <laughs> says don't panic says don't panic mm. if it gets into a stress situation just move them all inside but that's where we are <laughs> that's not good, right? I don't think the chickens are too bothered really because compared to what the farmers got in store for them flu is a bit of a holiday really isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but if yeah, I was a chicken I'd be snogging other chickens trying to catch them. <laughs> they've been talking about 20 million people might die if the bird flu kicks off we're all right we're blokes aren't we <laughs> <laughs> Someone had to say it, Vic, and I'm glad it was you. See what I've done there? Yeah. yeah, it's just the birds who are going to get it, isn't it? <laughs> if only, Vic. And then me and you could just run yeah. off together into sunset. <laughs> <laughs> like we did last week. Yeah. Well, let's have a look and see whether avian bird flu is one of the top five most talked about things this week. Yes, it is. Yes, the second most talked about thing this week was bird flu. The deadly H5N1 virus is close to Britain. Coincidentally, H5N1 is Bernard Matthews' postcode. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, Neil, Dave, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Wembley's not finished. Mm. Fuck off, really? Yeah. <laughs> Big shot. No surprise. I, I was looking at some sort of report on it, said that it's going to have 2,000 toilets. Wembley's going to have 2,000. And that, that, there you are. There's your delay. Waiting for the plumber, aren't they? <laughs> I, I thought actually that one of the problems is, is a language problem, isn't it, with the Australian builders? Because they used to have the rising inflection. Don't they? When they finish a sentence, they, they rise up as if it's a question. So I think when they say, like, tomorrow you'll start work at eight, <laughs> the boats go, hey, probably means about half ten. <laughs> I just like the part that they were bollocking them for doing coke. I wouldn't make them do it, just make it do it all faster. <laughs> That's the answer, Kelly. People haven't been brave enough to say it, but drugs are what these builders need. <laughs> Think of what you could build with 750 million. You could have a, a ladder to the moon for one. <laughs> one <laughs> for one pound? Well, that's better than having a big stadium, isn't it? A, a, you know, a ladder to the moon. Yes, but if you could deliver, Vic, I'd invest. <laughs> I've got 750 million to play with. I could have a pipe that goes down to the bottom of the Mariana Trench that you could slide down <laughs> and get fired out the other side. <laughs> We haven't thought this through. <laughs> a ladder to the moon. <laughs> a ladder. No, said well, like we that, it sounds a lot more impressive. A ladder to the moon. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, Mr. Bond. <laughs> we build the biggest water slide in the world. <laughs> the problem you've got with a ladder to the moon, though, is where do you build it? You've got to have a lot enough. Do you mean a base camp? Yeah. Anglesey. <laughs> Hang on, who'd hold it? Ah. Oh, you... no, it's got a metal base. Oh, right. Set, okay. set it to concrete, Richard. Sorry, mate. <laughs> right, let's have a look and see whether, whether Wembley is one of the most talked about things this week. Of course it is. Yes, it yeah. was. 35% of you were talking about the fact that Wembley Stadium will not be ready for this year's FA Cup final. The delays have thrown the fixtures list into chaos. Chelsea will now be playing Bon Jovi in the charity shield. <laughs> Sean Kelly and Vic, what else have the nation been talking about? The robbery. I think it's wicked. Some guy got away with £40 million pounds worth of unmarked notes. Good for him. I blame the parents. <laughs> so you were, you were right behind those guys and nicked your mum's jewels? They can die a painful death. My mum's really <laughs> pissed off about that. I think he got what was coming to him. My dad did fucking chuck him out a window. Did he mean to or did he just... No, <laughs> <laughs> He's on satellite navigation now, isn't he? I know! What's yeah. that now? Yeah. That's fantastic! Your dad's doing satellite navigation? No, he's not. It's somebody saying that it's him. It was like they had this whole thing in the newspaper how that's like the new thing to download is the voice of your sat now. Mm. And it's the number one selling is my dad's voice and the second one is my mum's voice. If I had to get in my car and turn on sat nav and listen to my parents anymore, <laughs> I would definitely <laughs> take it back to my head. Apparently now you can buy tractors with sat nav. And I thought, how pointless is that? He goes, you are now in lower field. <laughs> <laughs> you are approaching upper field. <laughs> Why would you want sat nav in a tractor? Or well, if you've got a really big farm. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't know where your fields are. 
when, do, when does a robbery become a heist? We don't have any heists over here, yeah, do we? Exactly. Someone has to, technically, the difference between a robbery and a heist is someone has to be lowered upside down on a wire. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> the police chief actually said the mistake they've made is they've stolen too much. Mm. What? <laughs> <laughs> and in the article it said if they got all the money that they'd taken and they stacked it all on top of one another, it'd be about 400 foot high. So if the thieves are watching, better not do that. <laughs> I think, I think, I think, uh, sorry, I'm enjoying a boiled sweet, I shouldn't be. <laughs> I think I should melt it down. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fine idea, then. It is good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You have the look of a master criminal about you. <laughs> there have been a couple of arrests. That's you see that guy riding down the street on an elephant going, woo <laughs> <laughs> With gold shoes on. <laughs> Two of them uh, disguised as policemen and the rest had the obligatory ski masks, baseball bats. Where did they buy them from? You went to JJB's and go, ski masks, half a dozen, and, uh, <laughs> tell you what, baseball bats as well. <laughs> <laughs> Playing around is it's a bit nippy. It's all right. <laughs> the thing I find interesting about this, this robbery is that they say, initially they say it's 40 million, they say it could be 50 million. Yeah. And these are people who are supposed to look after money <laughs> and they don't know how much is in there. <laughs> That's why they should have taken it, but not looking after it. It wasn't the fact that they weren't looking after it. They did actually have to break in, threaten to kill people to get yeah, it. It wasn't like they were people. just sitting on a riverbank going... <laughs> <laughs> I just want to ask, Neil, how would you get rid of 40 million quid? Oh, so easy. Buy a little country. <laughs> <laughs> buy you a can little buy country. one of those yeah. islands off Dubai. Absolutely. Stick some electricity on there, grow a big, fat, whole plantation of marijuana plants and never leave. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, you may applaud, but what kind of example is that to little Kelly Osborne? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look and see whether the heist is one of the most talked about things this week. Ooh. Yes, it is. Ooh. Yes, the £40 million pound heist was the most talked about thing this week. The authorities are looking for people who will give themselves away by driving flash cars and wearing lots of jewellery. Police have arrested Essex. <laughs> Of course, they have no idea who did it. In other news, nine dustmen have just bought Charlton Athletic. <laughs> Dave, uh, what else have uh, people been talking about this week? Well, um, there's, there's a, there's a, there was a story, wasn't there, about the, um, the gay footballers having um, um, organising orgies amongst themselves? Gay orgies? That's something you wouldn't know anything about. <laughs> but, I mean... It, I, <laughs> <laughs> We're just friends. That's how rumours <laughs> are. That's a very big assumption, Neil. So, what are you trying to say? Are you gay, Richard? <laughs> Come on, get it out now while you're on television. Don't get it out now, Richard. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I didn't like the stuff about the vibrating telephones. Ah, well, you see, stuff. obviously very useful in, as a sexual toy. Depends what ringtone it's got, really. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> if it's got, do you know the way to Amarillo? Well, it's not up here, mate. You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> it gives a whole new meaning to the word ringtone, doesn't it? But you can... <laughs> run around on a field with a bunch of other men. Some of them have got to be gay. It must be harsh news, though, when the manager comes in and goes, statistically, some of you have to be gay. It's true! <laughs> it's you two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid you'll be spending all your time in the dugout. <laughs> Apparently, one of them, they, they went back to their house and one of them went off into his bedroom, came out with 5,000 in cash and said, I'll, I'll give it to anybody who'll perform a sex act. Now, the thing that struck me about that was, <laughs> five grand in cash, that money should be in an ISA. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's have a look and see whether it was the most talked about thing this week. Okay. Yes, it was. <laughs> okay, what else have people been talking about? The Prince's Charles's diaries. Go on, tell me more. The royal family aren't to have any opinion on political or politics, anything, and he just, I think he would write his beliefs on China and something that's going on in China, I don't know, and send it off to people <laughs> and they got printed. Yeah. It's like yeah. news night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, you're right, the royal family aren't meant to have any political opinions. Do you know what that is? Because it causes problems. No, it's because they're inbred and they're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I think Prince Charles's diary would be like, Wednesday, got up, ate a swan, it was good. <laughs> He's, he's a real drama queen, isn't he? I mean, he's, he's saying, no, look, nobody will appreciate me till I'm dead. I mean, he's turning to Morrissey, isn't he? Right? <laughs> <laughs> nobody loves me, you know. <laughs> He's a ridiculous prick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether Prince Charles's diaries is one of the most talked about things this week. Okay. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, 
This is the story of Prince Charles's diaries being leaked to the press. He describes himself as a political dissident. Funny, I can't remember Che Guevara having a butler. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, Kelly and Vic have three points. Dave, Richard and Neil have two points. <laughs> Welcome back. The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Seven out of ten adults are unaware that there is an £80 on-the-spot fine for what? Is there an £80 on-the-spot fine for letting your kids scream and run around? It is to do with kids. Is it threatening to shut them in the car? Because, like, we are our, our son Jack, he was about six and he was really infuriating everybody, right? I, <laughs> I, I used to say to him, if you don't behave yourself, you're going to the car. And on this occasion, it was Sunday lunch in the pub and he wouldn't shut the fuck up. So I picked him up. <laughs> he's a proud dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's 19 now, I still do it. <laughs> put him over my shoulder and started to walk out through, the, and everyone was really glad, right? People like you. Be, said, nice one. Glad. Thanks, yeah. Dad, you're doing it. So I said, come on, we're going to the car. And we weren't really. Just going out the front, a little word, and then come back. Going out through all these people in the tables, and he's a little sod. He, he, he suddenly got the idea of going to the, above my head to the public, and he said, Not the car! <laughs> <laughs> Not the car! Right? I think, no, you're coming to the car. And he goes, <laughs> Help! <laughs> <laughs> It's buying something you shouldn't. Alcohol underage. Correct. Alcohol, Alcohol sure. underage. Yeah. There you go. Yes, seven out of ten adults are unaware that there is an £80 on the spot fine for buying alcohol for minors, but it's worth it just to see their little drunken faces. <laughs> Kids slur the funniest things. 71% <laughs> of Brits agree that what is an acceptable pastime? Mm. <laughs> Take it away, Vic. <laughs> Putting sellotape over your eyes. Just uh, <laughs> that. <laughs> it is good fun. Streaking in a mosque. <laughs> what about <laughs> sex? S sex? Yeah. Do you only find sex acceptable? That's why I tend to say after sex. I tend to say that it was acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> is it yeah. acting? Acting isn't acceptable. It's not a proper job, is it? Bollocks! No, it's just, <laughs> just you've got to read out loud without giggling. Really, is it? I was sat next to an actress at a dinner and she was talking about, oh, God, it's so hard. <laughs> you, you sit in this trailer all day long. I'm like, yeah, right, you get paid like £9 million pounds per movie. Shut up. Who was the actress? Not telling. Come on. <laughs> Come on, name that bitch. <laughs> Patricia Routledge. No. <laughs> Patricia Routledge getting nine million pounds a movie. <laughs> Come on, who is it? I think she's cracking. I'll tell you what, we'll put you in the car. <laughs> it won't be the first time me and Richard Madeley have bundled Don't a young you lady into the back of the car. <laughs> <laughs> can you give us a clue? It involves holding something in your hand. Angling? It's going to be fishing. Exactly the right answer, Excuse Neil Morrison. Me, I thought so. So yeah, that means that quite a large percentage of British people think that angling is completely unacceptable. Yeah. <laughs> They're running on the river, yeah. pushing them in. <laughs> angling is uh. totally unacceptable. <laughs> Here's your next one. 10% of dinner ladies see what as essential? Is it food? <laughs> what about topless Friday? <laughs> no fried food today. Come on. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's to do with a kitchen implement. Axe. An axe. <laughs> <laughs> what, about, what about, like, a serving spoon? It's a, uh, that would be higher than 10%, I feel. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'd rather just do it with their hands. Like that, yeah. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, I can't believe you haven't guessed. 10% of dinner ladies think salad spinners are essential. Oh. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you, it's three points to Sean's team and five points to Dave's team. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give you a simple statement, and all you have to do is tell me whether you think it's true or false. Dave, Richard and Neil, let's see your clip. That was a clip from the 1984 horror movie Attack of the Beast Creatures. Here is your related statistic. If attacked by a bear whilst camping, 31% of American men would abandon their partner in favour of their own safety. <laughs> is that true or false? What you shouldn't do if a bear comes at you, you should not. 
run. You shouldn't run away because they take that as panic. I mean, I think you should run away if there's two of you. If she's there, you should say, run. let's run for it because you just keep a bit in front of her then, couldn't you? you just go... <laughs> I'll run that way, you run for the cubs. <laughs> She'll not attack you with her kids. I mean, I know, I've actually dealt with, I know how to deal with bears. Uh, I know that I wouldn't want to. It's very easy to deal with. A lot of people get frightened. There's no need to be frightened. The thing about bears is, is you just let them come at, come at, come at you, just keep them as fast as they want, just stand still. And when they're about six inches away, you just do this, you just go, whoa, like that. <laughs> they've got those big round feet, they've got no mobility. They just go, whoa. <laughs> Uh, Richard, I've got a question for you. OK, yeah. you're camping with Judy. Yeah. Do you abandon Judy if attacked by a bear? I would lay down my life for my wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, presumably, when you get home, you go, oh, yeah, I don't watch this Judy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if attacked by a bear whilst camping, 31% of American men would abandon their partner in favour of their own safety. Is that true or is it false? We, think it's, we now think it's false. You are right, it is false. Yeah. 7% of US men would abandon a loved one if attacked by a bear. Never mind a bear, I nearly left my girlfriend when that whale came up the Thames. <laughs> Sean, Kelly and Vic, here's a clip to illustrate your fact. This chimp sleep 12 hours daily, love bread and butter, tea, coffee, hot chocolate and the occasional bottle of beer. Rena says that training them to skate needs endless patience and an inexhaustible supply of bananas. <laughs> Langford without a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen her, Bonnie Langford, in that show? Yeah. I've never seen anyone look so pleased to be on television. <laughs> Looks like she's going to explode if she gets any happy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a related statistic for you 25% of vets have treated a drunk pet. Is that true or false? But that could be just the same pet that's gone around a quarter of the vets in Britain. <laughs> There's one real boozy <laughs> dog. It's when the dogs start repeating themselves, isn't it? It's the same story over and over again. Yes, I know, I've heard it. <laughs> An animal will, will head towards alcohol yeah, if it sees it. You know, if a pelican sees some vodka... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be in there. <laughs> You've got a lot of pets. What, what have you got, Vic? Pelican. <laughs> no, yeah. He, My... Senor, no have pelican. No, no have pelican. <laughs> I feel like I've arrived down in Mexico way. Yeah. Uh, and the locals, they know so friendly. Yeah. Hey, English, <laughs> you want pelican? <laughs> Follow me, but tell no one. <laughs> So, 25% of vets have treated a drunk pet. Richard, a, what do you think? A vet only has to treat a pissed pet once, and he's, he's in that statistic, isn't he? He's got a point. A whole career, and he's never treated a drunk pet. I don't think so. I agree, Richard. I think it's true. I think it's true. True, we'll go true. Well, I can tell you, you are absolutely right. 25% of vets have treated a drunken pet. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you, it's four points for Sean's team and six points for Dave's team. Right. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and it's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. Top priority for single men buying a house. Is it a kitchen sink that flushes? <laughs> <laughs> is it one of those jewel-encrusted steel telephone helmet? It goes like that. <laughs> and a massage glove. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, thinking it, yeah. we got points in the bag. <laughs> I used to live in a flat, um, it was very sort of thin walls and there was, there was a very, very attractive trio of girls who lived in the flat next door. I swear, before I moved in, there was a, there was a hole in, in the wall between my bedroom and... There, it was there. I thought of complaining to the landlord, but I thought, no, let them look. <laughs> when I was a single man, every time I moved, first thing I do, if I've got phone-connected electricity, I go to the nearest off-licence, I go up to the counter and I say, hi, I'm Sean, and over the next few years, you'll be seeing quite a lot of me. <laughs> Never sell me whiskey. <laughs> Opposite a pub, next to a pub. Correct, Dave. <laughs> right. Dream holiday companions. There was a thing in the paper the other week that uh, some, somebody checked in and the, the luggage was 10 kilos over and the guy went, well, let's see if we can take anything out and they undid it. Telly. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you taking the television, Benidorm? Coronation Street. <laughs> 
invented a holiday extension, <laughs> which is it's about 100 miles long. So you just you plug it in, and you just you can use your own electricity supply. <laughs> That's your holiday. Yeah. An electricity supply that you feel comfortable with. Uh, Stephen Hawkins, I take, because you get on the plane first, then, wouldn't you? <laughs> Is it Judith Chalmers? Because she'd be really good company on the plane, and in the event of a, a crash in the Andes, she'd be quite tasty. Do you think? I think she'd be nice steamed. <laughs> if Judith, if Judith is watching this, you're not under any sort of immediate threat. <laughs> We're just discussing how we'd like to eat you. <laughs> mm. <laughs> We're going to eat you, Judith. Is it, is it an English person or an American person? It is an English, an English couple. <gasps> oh, what Richard about, and Judy. Um, Pete and Pete. <laughs> Is it her mum and dad? Yes, it is. Your mum and dad. Hold your show. Get out of here. Oh, God. Our nation's dream oh, holiday right. companions are Sharon and Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, that's right, that sound tells me that it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Kelly and Vic have four points, but our winners are Dave, Richard and Neil with nine points. <laughs> Thank you to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching it. That's it from us. See you next week. Cheers.